Hello again. Uh, here we are for the third session in English. Uh, we're staying in the north of Europe, uh, more precisely Belgium. We have here two, uh, two friends from, uh, coming from Belgium. Uh, we have uh, Blandine Malvaux from Win Europe and Jonas Kotaert. Am I right? Well, approximately. <laughs> approximately. From Corwright, uh, together with us. And uh, the, the main topic of this session is about uh, offshore wind farms, how we, can, uh, how we can think about producing hydrogen from uh, offshore wind. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a new subject, but this is a massive subject. Um, for those who were here earlier this morning uh, for the discussion with Gazuni, you could discover the concept of uh, sector integration between uh, offshore wind production and uh, the, uh, the gas networks. So for now, we are going to focus on this uh, wind uh, offshore production. Starting with uh, Blandine. Blandine, you are with uh, Wind Europe. Can you tell us uh, a bit about this organization, who you are, uh, who you are representing um, in the story? So we are an association. Very close to. Uh, sorry, we are an association based in Brussels, and we are representing the voice of the whole wind industry in Europe. So quite quite a big industry. So we have over 400 members in 35 countries. And so we have wind turbines manufacturers, component suppliers, research institutes, but also electricity providers as our members. So that's a bit who we okay. are. So this is the big European association for the, 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 the Rep wind. Uh, representing the whole value chain of wind. Yeah, the whole value chain. All countries ag uh, across Europe, right? Okay, where are you based? In Brussels. In Brussels. Okay, thanks. Jonas, Colruyt. Hello. Uh, Corad Group is a retail company, still family-owned retail company in Belgium. Uh, we have the biggest share in Belgium, only Belgium. We are also operating in France, so we have 80 supermarket stores in France. And uh, investing in sustainability is part of our NDA, our DNA. Um, we do it from the past because we have a market that we guarantee the lowest prices. And if you want to guarantee the lowest prices, you need to be very efficient. And in the past, we have learned that if we are efficient, it's also an, an advantage for our sustainability. LED lighting and so on is also part towards sustainability in retail. And that's the reason why the last years and the coming years, uh, Colorado Group wants to invest more than 35 million into hydrogen projects. Yeah. And... Uh I'm very surprised because I have seen a lot of uh, announcement and news uh, in where Corroid is actually involved in, in many different projects relating to hydrogen, trucks, production, so many things. Why? The reason is that we are in the whole chain from the product until the end customer. And if you see, we are part of logistics. Uh, we have also energy. So we have a... a a dedicated uh, energy, internal energy company who is producing renewable energy coming from wind and solar RCHP. We are also into logistics because we are a retail company. So if we want to decarbonize our logistics, and then we are talking about internal logistics, but also the external logistics with uh, heavy duty trucks. If we want to be, or we want to decarbonize, we also need to invest in alternatives. And that's also the reason why we have three hydrogen uh, European funded projects where we want to demonstrate hydrogen heavy duty trucks, 44 ton, 27 ton, just to gain the experience, not only for the heavy duty truck itself, but also from the fuel side or the fueling station side. So for our end customers, we are providing today the conventional fuels like diesel, gasoline, also CNG. And in future, we want also to provide for our end customers the electricity for the immobility and also hydrogen. So since 2007 or 2011, we are investigating a lot into hydrogen projects. So we are producing hydrogen on site for logistics. And a part of that is also used for our cars. So we have around 20 cars, hydrogen cars nowadays for our own players who can use it. And with these projects, we gain the experience to see what we can do with hydrogen and where we can start the market for hydrogen. 
And now the latest one is also the investment of a 25 megawatt industrial scale hydrogen production. Just because we have learned that if you want to produce hydrogen at a lower price to make it accessible for our end customers, but also for our own logistics, because we need to be very efficient, and we need to do it at larger scale. That's the reason why we want to invest in a 25 megawatt. And we want to be operational, and the goal is to be operational in 23, so 2023. We will be operational. We are now in the second phase of the project, and we are now really creating and tendering for the, for the equipment itself. Okay. If I remember well, the project uh, is connected to a port? Yes, it's, it's connected to the Sea Bruce port in, uh, in Belgium. And it's also part in a, in a bigger uh, European project where we want to connect all different seaports together to create a hub uh, to produce hydrogen and to use it in between the ports for first mobility, transport and logistics. Also to inject into the natural gas grid or to convert the gas grid to hydrogen gas grid. Uh, the third one is to use it in industry and the fourth one is for net stabilization, net balancing. Okay, and when... When did you start to, uh, to think about hydrogen as an energy vector? Because uh, it's, it's present in many, many, many projects within the company. Uh, I, I mean, it's coming, where, where is it coming from? It started in 2004 um, because we wanted to see what the uh, opportunity could be to bring hydrogen into logistics. Uh, hydrogen for mobility and transport started in the niche market for forklifts. And that's the reason, because we are a retailer, that we invested into projects for the logistic part, so internal logistics. So we gained the experience, and from the one project came the other project. We can use hydrogen also for cars, and that's the reason, because we have fueling stations, that we want to use that experience to trans translate it into hydrogen fueling stations. And that's also the reason, because we have uh, one branch that is focusing on mobility and fueling stations, that in Belgium we want to add four additional fueling stations on hydrogen between this and two years to launch the market in Belgium for cars and at the end also for heavy duty. Okay, so the ports, uh, important component, the connection with offshore as well. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And uh, coming back to you, um, I have seen another announcement uh, with Ostend as another port uh, willing to deploy um, massive production of, uh, of hydrogen. Can you tell us a bit ab about that? Uh, so yes, I think it was announced last week, if I'm, if I'm correct. So it's, uh, oh, oh, it's the port in Ostend. They are calling it the High Port uh, Ostend project in Belgium. So it's a demonstration project. Uh, still, they want to uh, use the excess offshore wind and to build a 50 megawatt uh, electrolyzer there and then to have a green uh, hydrogen uh, plant in by 2025. Uh, I think the, the goal is to reduce the emissions of uh, minus 500,000 to 1 million CO2 uh, emissions per year. So it's quite, it's quite big indeed and, and quite new. So let's see what's uh, so happening So th these are really two big sites. Uh, to, even 25 megawatt of electrolysis is already something yes. big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, our goal is to start with the 25 because we started two years ago but it's scalable and we can go to 100 megawatts. So we want to start first with the 25. We are now creating the market also in Belgium. We are talking with uh, distributors, transport companies, public transport, captive fleet for the mobility part. And we are also connecting with industry players and also the gas suppliers to collaborate on this project to start with the 25 first and see how we can scale up to, to another uh, to 50 or 100 megawatts. Mm. Well. Hydrogen is a brand new subject for the um, renewable producers. And uh, with Win Europe, you have, um, I, I'm suppose, I'm, I suppose that you have a, a broad view of all the players across Europe. And uh, can you tell us a bit about the, uh, how much the, the hydrogen subject is, uh, is present in your uh, discussions, in your uh, uh, meetings and uh, exchanges within the organization? So basically, we created a working group on electrification just last year to work on this, on this broad topic. And at European level, uh, especially in the European institutions, hydrogen is quite big these days. So it came up uh, because it was in the, in, in the news, basically. It was, it was a new topic. 
And uh, so we have established our, our position this year, actually, on the hydrogen, the big principles. So that electrification, direct electrification, should be a first principle, and then indirect electrification, so including hydrogen, should come as a complement. Uh, on, uh, only when necessary so in the, what we call the hard to abate sector, so such as heavy duty transport, so uh, what, uh, what you're doing, uh, but also uh, heavy industry, and it's really a growing subject, and that, that's how it came in our agenda, basically. But also, we've, what we've looked at is that today there's no really a business case for um, using uh, curtailed renewables uh, and to produce green hydrogen. Uh, but there are some uh, nice uh, assumptions from uh, ARENA saying that the costs uh, to produce renewable hydrogen will go down and it could be competitive uh, with uh, hydrogen pursuits from fossil fuels with CCS as of 2030, 2035 in, in the best case. So that's really why we are, we are looking into it, basically. And are you uh, driving studies inside your organization on this topic? or? Uh on hydrogen itself, no, yeah. but we have done one on, on electrification to see the percentage of electrification we would need to decarbonize and reach the Paris Agreement objectives. And we had the conclusion that we would need 62% of uh, direct electrification uh, by 2050 to, to respect the Paris Agreement objectives. Okay, uh, I don't know whether you have a visibility on that, but do you see um, this interest for hydrogen within your organization uh, well balanced between all the countries, or is this more a subject for Northern Europe, for example? You're thinking of offshore wind, right? More yeah. than yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because there are some projects on onshore, curtail onshore wind to to be used as as well. And I'm thinking of uh, Northern Ireland in Belfast with the bus line as well. So it does exist as well. Just just to make things in perspective. But yes, indeed, in the North Sea region, uh, there are more projects, and uh, I know that a company such as Orsted is looking a lot into, into it, indeed. Mm. So I would say more the Nordic countries and uh, the Northern Europe, but even if the others are also looking into it. So. Mm. I, I guess you, you are also in direct contact with the European Commission as, an as, a, as a body for, for the industry. Uh, they, they are talking to you about the, uh, the hydrogen subject or, uh, or not at all? Or are you bringing the subject to the table, uh, DG Energy, uh, maybe not? Uh, I would say it's uh, an exchange all the time. So they were focusing on the gas stakeholders uh, on hydrogen, but recently they have realized that they need to talk to other players as well. So we are having quite a discussion with them, especially as they want to uh, issue an sector coupling strategies, uh, really putting hydrogen on the agenda. And uh, that's, that's why uh, we are also talking to them, yes, indeed. So you, you clearly see uh, an interest. Uh, well, um, the, the, the commission is not only talking to the gas industry now, they are also talking to you, right? OK. Um, so your plans uh, beyond, uh, you're talking about the production, but you're also m very much involved in the usages. So, yes. what, what, what are the big uh, trends for you? Uh, you mean threats? Or what, what, did, what was Use ages. Uh, well, we, the, the goal is to, of course, if we, are, we have the link with Colorado's group, so we are a retail company, we want to decarbonize first our heavy duty, heavy duty. If you see nowadays there is nothing mature yet, so we are now working on prototypes together with OEMs and constructors to have something onto the market within five or ten years. Uh, at the same time, we are also developing and demonstrating the first uh, fueling stations for heavy duty because cars is one thing, heavy duty is another thing. It's, it's about more volume, it's about more production, lower price, taxes are different, so there are a lot of issues to... To, to tackle, uh, and at the end, of course, we want on long term invest in some other production units because Seabrugge uh, is now the first one, but if we want to deliver other fueling stations, we need to have a second and a third one, and that's what we are thinking of now to see how we can introduce in Belgium, in Belgium only, where we can have sources for green hydrogen be because that's our longer goal or longer vision we want to have. We want to have the green hydrogen into these fueling stations for transport. Okay. What, what is uh, your vision about the, the, uh, the transport of hydrogen as a molecule? Yes. 
uh, because you are going to produce offshore, uh, you will have a plant uh, in a port, mm -hmm. uh, and then... <laughs> how, how good, you... good question. Um, nowadays we are trying to, to look for uh, fueling stations uh, next to the source itself. Uh, in Belgium and France and in Belgium you have a big hydrogen pipeline, so we hope to use that pipeline for the transport of hydrogen. Uh, that's also the reason why Flux is into, is, is into the project, to see how we can use or the gas grid or to convert the gas grid for, to couple these sources next to our fueling stations. And if it's not possible, we need to distribute it via tube trailers to our fueling stations. Okay. And are you considering to be a player in the transport or not at all? What, what was your question? Are you considering to be a player in the transportation of, of the mercury or not? No, we are not. A, the, the goal is not to distribute gas because we are not a gas supplier. We want to have some, some track on production that we control the price of the hydrogen we are going to use in our transport and mobility. That's what we are doing. Okay, great. And uh, for the conclusion, win Europe. <laughs> uh, how do you see, um, well, what, what are the main challenges that you have identified uh, if you, um, in terms of, for, for your own uh, stakeholders, uh, are, are they telling you that uh, you, you need to be more involved in, in, this, uh, in this industry? Are, you, are they telling you that uh, uh, they, they need more information? Uh, what, what is the level of uh, involvement from the producer? I don't know if my, my, my question um, is very clear. No, no, no. It really depends on, on the type of members you're talking to, actually. Um, I think they really want us to monitor a bit the situation and what's going on. Is it just another big project or is it a, or, or of the European Commission? How it is going to, be, to evolve? But I think a lot of members actually see that it's here to stay and um, hydrogen really has to be considered uh, more deeply. And uh, I think that's a bit, a bit the vision we have. But concerning the challenges, I think it's on, on the offshore side, if, if we go back on the offshore, it's really how, how are we going to build the, all the capacity uh, we need in order to, to have renewable hydrogen if we use offshore wind to, to produce hydrogen. So the European Commission said that we need 450 gigawatts by 2050. So it means multiply by 20 the capacity we have today, and that's one of the biggest challenges we, we, we have, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the subjects is uh, to develop offshore uh, production far from the shore, and maybe with the possibility to only produce hydrogen from there instead of getting electricity back to the shore. Is this something that you have heard of? There are some demonstration projects to produce hydrogen on sea uh, at, at offshore, um, but it's only demonstration at this time. So we are following up, we are seeing wh where they are going to, and if there is a feasibility and it's profitable, I think that's one way to produce hydrogen offshore and to get the gas on the, on the country itself. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to comment on that last question? No, no, I, I think we have the same example in mind, the North Sea Wind Power Hub, right? Okay. Thank you very much for this uh, quick and fast uh, discussion. And uh, enjoy your stay here in France, in Paris, and visit all the uh, exhibitors. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You.